program participants with our forest partners and project beneficiary equity or participation requirements into the project. Under the DFP, we join hands with eligible state universities and colleges, local government units, people's organizations with community-based forest management agreement awarded by the DENR and other government agencies managing large forest areas. Our forest partners are identified based on these parameters. Ten year control over a vast tract of land, legality and relevance of entity, activeness and uh, capability of the organization and members, basic skills and resources in venturing into a forest project and establishment of nursery for propagation of Philippine indigenous native trees and bamboos. Next slide, please. The DFP has mechanisms that provide for sustainable project management with forest partners, on-site residents and communities who participate in DBP forest projects are both beneficiaries and responsible parties for ensuring the viability of the forest projects with their strategic and direct involvement in forest maintenance activities. In selecting the site for a project, for a forest project, TFP considers the following. First, public land area. For upland forests, these are areas with slope of 18 degrees and above that are open for planting. Secondly, it is not to be subjected to land use change. The area is proven to be compatible with certain high-value fruit trees, accessible to allow easy bringing in of planting stocks and facilitate monitoring and bringing of produce to the market and high poverty incidents. Our pre-qualification criteria under the DFP, our forest program, set the parameters for identifying priority areas with the DENR, identified watersheds, river basins for restoration under the general program of action and tributaries, as well as critical watershed supporting national irrigation systems. As you very well know, water now is a scarce and critical uh, resource. Priority is also given to Bangsamoro, forest projects located in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao, the BARM, and its seat of government in Cotabato. Cities include Lamitan and Marawi. Next slide. An upland forest project must have an, a, an area of 50 to 200 hectares, while a mangrove forest project must have an area of 10 to 100 hectares. I think this was uh, uh, in the previous slide. But uh, that the forest project, the following. 100% of the cost of planting stocks for grafted, budded, and marcoted types. 40% of the cost of planting stocks for plantation establishment and planting, as well as maintenance requirements for the first year. 10% of the cost of planting stocks for replacement of mortality. 10% of the cost of planting stocks for livelihood of uh, participating farmer beneficiaries and 90% of cost of establishment of nursery for propagation of Philippine indigenous native trees and bamboo. Next slide, please. A 
attesting to the effectiveness of our multi-sectoral collaboration to re-green the environment are 47 DBP forest projects with a total area of almost 7,500 hectares and a total of 6.36 million trees planted to date. These DBP forest projects are located across the country. 28 are in Luzon, 12 in Mindanao, and 7 in the Visayas. Out of these DBP forest projects, 28 are revenue generating, and we hope more would follow soon. The DBP forest projects extend assistance to a total of 7,363 beneficiaries from Palawan, Iboli, Igorot, Manobo, Mangyan, Aita, Mandaya, and Bilaan communities. It takes two to tango, as they say, and such is also the case in a partnership. DBP and its forest partners must perform certain responsibilities to ensure that our collective goals are achieved. We count on our forest partners and our farmer beneficiaries to be involved and show their concern as they do their share in the regular maintenance and protection of the DBP forest project. We have here slide six. Now, let me talk about DBP's development program for the sustainability of the industrial forest-based plantation, or what we call the Agroforestry Plantation Program, or APP. APP is a credit assistance program for the development, expansion, harvesting, processing, maintenance and protection of industrial forest-based plantations of species that include fruit-bearing trees such as avocado and langka, which is the subject of our conference today, as well as round wood, fuel wood, bamboo, rattan, coffee, cacao, and rubber. These plantations should be situated in qualified private and public land consisting of at least five to 40,000 hectares of open area for scalability and efficiency. The program aims to address rapid deforestation concerns, assist communities and tree growers to improve their economic conditions and reduce the susceptibility of communities to natural uh, disasters. Uh, next slide, please. Loan assistance under the APP can be utilized to finance the cost of uh, tree plantation and agroforestry projects, including plantation development, plantation expansion, plantation maintenance and protection, acquisition of pre-harvest, and post-harvest facilities, harvesting of mat mature species, establishment of facilities, and development of a project site as an ecotourism destination. We extend credit assistance to plantation operators, tenure holders, people's organizations, people's organization federations, and local government units. Next slide, please. Plantation operators may borrow up to 80% of the total project cost. LGUs, on the other hand, can borrow up to 90% of the total project cost or the winning bid price, whichever is lower. As we are all for the success of our development partners, repayment under the APP is up to a maximum of 15 years, inclusive of grace period, depending on the scope of project and its nature. Next slide, please. Now we talk about rapid growth project. Alongside sustainability, DBP is also a champion of inclusiveness. 
And this brings me to a recent partnership initiative born of consistent efforts to bring as many Filipinos into the mainstream of growth and development. DBP has partnered with the Department of Trade and Industry, our DTI, well represented here, to support their implementation of the national government's rapid agro enterprise partnership for inclusive development growth, which we now know as the Rapid Growth Project. This project is funded by the International Fund for Agricultural Development, as presented earlier. Through the Rapid Growth Project, necessary development interventions will be provided to help improve production, productivity, and the quality of specific agricultural value chains, such as processed foods, fruits rather, and nuts, a key feature of the Rapid Growth Project is the conditional matching grant, wherein grant fund support will be provided to qualified proponents to enhance their overall competitiveness level and for the development of specific agricultural value chains. The conditional matching grant aims to address market failures and institutional deficiencies in terms of access to financing. Value chain actors who are entitled to receive matching grants are those that are identified and listed in the regional strategic investment plans and the detailed implementation plan of the DTI. Next slide, please. DBP supports the Rapid Growth Project by financing the equity counterpart under the matching grant component of this initiative. Eligible borrowers may be granted up to 90% of the total project cost net of the matching grant with a minimum loanable amount of 5 million pesos. As you can see, DBP is bent on exhausting all means to enhance access to credit by our enterprising Kababayans, particularly those engaged in priority agricultural value chains, as well as those that promote business partnerships between enterprises and farmers. For DBP, growth and progress are meaningless if their benefits are not cascaded to those who need them most, the underserved and the unbanked. It is this motivation that has always pushed DBP to leave no stone unturned in facilitating equitable access to much needed programs and services for financial inclusion. Next slide. Please. Last year, DBP took a multi-channel approach in the release of more than 1.48 billion of cash assistance to around 297,000 small-scale farmers under the Department of Agriculture's Rice Farmers Financial Assistance or the RFFA program. The RFFA is an unconditional cash transfer program for rice farmers in 33 rice producing provinces across the country, 500 square meters up to two hectares. Each beneficiary receives a 5,000 cash aid, which can be used for farm inputs and implements. DBP has since signed an agreement with the DA for the distribution of 3,000 pesos each in cash subsidies to around 900,000 of these marginal farmers through an e-voucher system under the cash and food subsidy to marginal farmers and fishers program. We also teamed up for a proof of concept that uh, we'll, we we see us getting to be quite successful with the provincial government of Isabela, the nagkaisang magsasaka ng Isabela, or called the NMIC, which is a, a wholly owned farmers cooperative, and Pay Maya Philippines, a fintech, to facilitate the cashless disbursement of funds 
to more than 5,000 farmer members of the NMIC, AgriCorp, including the proceeds of more than 5,000 tobacco farmers share from excise taxes. DBP opened the financing window for NMIC, AgriCorp, under the expanded rice credit assistance of the Rice Competitiveness Enhancement Fund, the ERCA RCEP, component of the Rice Tarification Law. Loan proceeds were utilized as working capital to procure palai from the marginalized member farmers of the co-op at a premium rate, with trading and all other financial transactions coursed through an ATM ID card. And we go to the last slide. This disbursement initiative show how DBP has harnessed technology and its network of partners to deliver innovative financial services responsive to the requirements of marginalized Filipinos and supportive of the national government's trust. DBP has become flexible enough to go beyond its usual brick and mortar banking in helping the national government mitigate the economic impact of the pandemic, particularly to the marginalized and vulnerable sectors of the economy. The pursuit of DBP's inclusive development mandate is a tall order that we as a bank cannot accomplish on our own. And this is why we believe in the power of strategic alliances of listening and discussing challenges to growth in order to bring to the fore services and various other interventions that will empower sectors to stake their claim to sustainable recovery and an inclusive economy. This convention has been one such important opportunity to foster such collaboration. And it has truly been an honor for me to be with you today, albeit virtually. I believe my Tokayo Secretary Mani would attest to you that I'd rather be on the ground with him in Mindanao and elsewhere than sitting in my office here in Makati. Again, thank you for this valuable chance and may this virtual convention be a launch pad for concretizing initiatives towards sustainable and inclusive growth, even as we remain focused on the urgent task of rebuilding not just the Philippine economy, but also the Filipino spirit. Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat at mabuhay po tayong lahat. Well said and thank you very much to the President and CEO of the Devel Development Bank of the Philippines, Mr. Emmanuel G. Arboza. Thank you very much. Sir. Um, okay, um, before proceeding, the next part of our program, tuloy-tuloy na po tayo, okay? Um, for our participants uh, viewing this on Zoom or Facebook, you can just have your lunch, just turn off your video so other people won't see you eating, okay? Uh, Minda staff, just take your lunch on a shifting basis so we won't leave the program. Okay? Um, before anything else, I would like to empathize that Secretary Emmanuel Pinol is the chairman of the Mindanao Development Authority. That is why the focus of our uh, programs po ay ano, uh, nasa Mindanao po. Okay? Um, hindi po kami madamot sa knowledge namin sa mga taga-Bisayas at Mindanao. Pero yun lang po yung focus talaga namin. And that's the reason why yung focus po namin is nasa Mindanao. We, we, we don't want to disenfranchise mga Bisayas and mga taga Luzon. Pero yung mandate po namin, and our, we are bound legally, okay, by statutes uh, to work within Mindanao lang. Okay? Pero if you want uh, a copy of our presentations, uh, PDF or PowerPoint, we are willing to share so long as you are registered po sa, sa link na pinigay ng administrator. Okay? So at this point, we are going to have an open forum. We're going to, you know, uh, we have a list of the questions that you raised earlier. We're going to throw them to the respective speakers. Okay? Um, we talked about the science behind and production of langka and avocado. We talked about um, market demand and opportunities locally and in the internationally. And we also discussed, uh, we had Mr. Herbosa talk about the 
opportunities for assistance, uh, financial assistance from the Development Bank of the Philippines. Okay, so tuloy-tuloy na po tayo. We are going to head on over to our open forum and it will be moderated by Dr. Adrian Tamayo. Dr. A, you have the floor. Well, thank you very much, Mox. So, here na po ta sa engagement. So, uh, we were able to collect. Pinolekta po namin yung uh, questions, concerns, no, and some clarifications. So, may I ask uh, for a screen share? Allow me to screen share, please. Okay, so I will just read uh, the questions, clarifications, and even concerns of our participants. Now. So we call this out from our chat box. Now. So first, I have export orders, 100,000 metric tons to Dubai. Uh, one thousand metric tons to Dubai now. Can we do it from Serene coming to one? So it's a challenge to the producers. Another, the Limpung ng Mangkatadong Sang Maragusan would like to establish nursery in ancestral domain of Mansaka in municipality of Maragusan. Uh, for jackfruit, the DRC Langka is ideal up to 810 ESL. Ano ang effect if planted 1,400 ESL? We hope si Dr. Um, Londina to shed light on this. That's from Michael Sinche. Another from Erwin Echavez. Uh, what are the NPK numbers that are ideal for jackfruit? And I have a few questions to the jackfruit presenter. If later is, is treated with typhoon, have that advocated double stock? Your cost return presentation did not account from the start of the land prep. And what is your crop improvement research on EDRC suite to improve on recovery color? So, uh, to pumuna, we may ask uh, the um, of course, our uh, secretary, Secretary Mani, uh, to respond also to some uh, concerns, questions being raised, as well as um, uh, our uh, Nakamute po sir, nakamute. Nakamute po, sir, nakamute po. That's why we have to project. I'm amused by the question of uh, 100,000 metric tons. I, I, I really wish 
we we have that volume right now. But then again, uh, it it is also an inspiring question. Because here is somebody that uh, can be has a exporting moving goods, uh, telling us that ganyan uh, kalaki yung potential ng ating uh, mga produkto ng sa atin. Para na, ang kagandahan niyan, sa experience natin in the highlands, actually, yung has avocado uh, would uh, be productive at age 2 years to 3 years. No? And I've seen this myself dun sa Nyarayon, where uh, Dole Philippines actually uh, planted uh, several uh, has avocado na ngayon ay namumunga na. So, uh, so far, uh, yan parang ang uh, ating update. No? Uh, number two, to sa question, limpong ng mangkatadong sang Marakusan Incorporated. Mga uh, tribal communities who would like to participate in the program. Yes. In fact, one of our speakers this afternoon uh, will be Secretary Alan Kapuyan or his representative. No? Uh, kasi ang tinatarga talaga natin dito is not just about planting avocado or planting uh, jackfruit in the highlands. This is actually about uh, uh, an inclusive program that addresses a lot of uh, issues. Like number one, yung ating problema sa uh, denudation, deforestation in the highlands of Mindanao, especially sa Bandang Bukit Noon, Cotabato, sa Buanga, and so on and so forth. So we are encouraging the planting of uh, langka and avocado in these areas kasi double purpose yun eh. May tree, plant, may tree farming na tayo, food tree farming. At the same time, we reforest. Number two, or at least we plant trees. May hindi na siguro reforest. Number two, we really would like to address poverty, especially in the tribal communities. Kaya kami ang hapon, si Secretary Kapuyan will be delivering a presentation uh, which will tell us ilang libong hektarya ba ang ancestral domain sa Pilipinas na walang tanim at mahirap ang mga tao simply because government has not really penetrated these areas in the past by introducing programs and projects like this. So it is only now under the Duterte administration that we are focusing on on these uh, vast unutilized areas. In fact, when I was Secretary of Agriculture, uh, on the instructions of the President, I designed a program called, called Four Ks: no? uh, Kabuhayan at Kasaganaan uh, uh, ng Katutubong, ng Kababayan Katutubo. Four Ks, no? where we are introducing. Uh, yung mga livelihood activities na familiar yung ating mga tribal uh, communities. Kasi mahirap pag-introduce ng project sa isang komunidad, lalo na tribal community, na hindi na alam eh. It will take some time. So, since they know how to plant, the easiest way for us to do is to introduce a program where all that they need is to plant. And all that, all that we need to do on how to do it properly and provide them with support, and link them to the market. Okay? So, ano ba yung bang questions kanina? Yung sa langka. Uh, actually, while sinabi kanina nung ating uh, resource person from uh, from uh, Region 8, no? uh, and by the way, uh, I, I have about uh, 500 uh, FDR sweet uh, jackfruit na galing sa FDR mismo na namumunga na ngayon at uh, source ng aking mga sayon sa actually. Uh, although hindi pa ito registered sa BPI as a uh, a uh, validated uh, FBR sweet nursery, uh, the planting materials actually came from FBR. No? And I'm now sharing this. No? In fact, I think Dr. Pamplona is, uh, is joining this uh, meeting today, one of the nursery operators uh, in uh, Cotabato. He came to my farm one day, wanted to buy scions of uh, my FBR sweet variety, uh, Langka. No? And he was asking me how much. I said, hindi naman ako yayaman pag binenta ko sa iyo, scion, kumbuha ka na lang dyan. 
uh, but the seedlings na na propagate namin uh, we we of course sell as part of our operations now ma'am i don't know if you can validate this but i've been to bukidnon a lot i mean i i, I go to uh, intasula and there i found out that jack fruits grow very well at elevations of 1,000 plus, 1,000 meters above sea level, up to one foot. Napakaganda na tubo, maganda yung kanilang uh, uh, foliage, maganda yung, uh, yung fruiting, and I don't know if you could validate this kasi sabi nyo kanina up to 800. But me personally, as a farmer, I've seen this. That's why I'm, I'm going to plant uh, MBR sweet variety in the uplands of Bukidnon. And uh, ano yung last question, Dr. Adrian? Kung sa PMAS uh, po, 800, uh, ano po daw ang impact? Uh, uh, nasa 1,400. No, precisely, that was what I was telling. No? While sabi ng ating experts from uh, EVR, and by the way, EVR should be credited for developing this uh, very sweet uh, uh, langka. Uh, na talagang pinagayabang natin. Uh, kanya lang may ibang nagagalit pag uh, hindi mo sinasagot yung message sa Facebook at sinasabi pa ako na bakit daw Mindanao lang ang focus ko. Oh, sorry, <laughs> Mindanao Development Authority lang ang hensya ko. <laughs> I wish it were, it were uh, Luzon, Visayas and Mindanao Development Authority but it's only Mindanao Development Authority. But we can help actually. So, so far, yun lang ang mga response ko dun sa mga tanong kanina. And I would like to thank uh, President Erbosa for uh, that very comprehensive presentation, actually. Uh, kailangan natin ng financing dito. Hindi pwedeng pabayaan natin si Farmer na magtanin na walang technical support, uh, walang financial support. Sapagkat kung magtataniman yan, tatlo o apat na puno lang. So, what do we do? It for... Uh, for uh, Blanca trees. We cannot, we, cannot, we cannot develop into an industry. Kapag sa likod ng bahay natin ay dalawang langka, isang avocado, ang lalagyan mo niyan, basket. No? You don't expect to export that. Ang lalagyan mo niyan, basket, at ang mangyayari sa'yo niyan, hihingan, ka ng kapit, hihingan lang ng kapitbahay mo. Nakakalo ito pag hindi mo binigyan. So, we want to, if we want to develop this industry, we have to uh, really uh, handle this as an industry, not as a uh, backyard activity. Sa pagkatyan palagi ang uh, problema natin sa Philippine agriculture, we have always looked at everything as a backyard activity. Uh, isang puno, dalawang puno, uh, and then we expect to get rich. No? Tanim tayo ng kamatis, isang, isang garden, and then we expect to be able to market our tomatoes uh, expecting a good price. We cannot do that. Kapag basket na nalagyan mo ng benta mo, you cannot command a good price. So that's why the logic of today's activity is to organize all avocado farmers, to organize all langka farmers, at least in Mindanao, para pag sinabi natin, ito yung production namin, we are producing this avocado, this volume, this quality, this is the price that we would like to get for our uh, for our produce, then we can command because we can hold the market. Pero pag uh, dalawang kilo lang avocado mo, ay yung kapitbahay mo lang bibig niyan. Uh, Ihingin ba yung kalahat eh? Okay? Thank you. Set. Another set of questions. Marami-rami kasi set. Uh... Meron pa? Yes. Opo. Ano yung last question? Uh, another, uh, ito po. Uh, let me share. By the way, let me acknowledge, no? Uh, this program is also being aired live uh, sa isang uh, station sa Pinapawan, BXNB. No? Okay. Is there any way to avoid inorganic fertilizers in growing has avocado? Do you apply organic fertilizer? Is it effective? I'm sorry, I'm not an expert. Uh, in the, I will not, I will not presume and assume uh, expertise in avocado. Not even langka. May mga expert tayo yan. So, 
since this event actually is just an organizational uh, uh, event, no? uh, after this, pag na-organize na tayo, because at the end of the day today, we expect to form the Mindanao Avocado and Jackfruit Council, Industry Council. Yun ang purpose natin. No? Uh, so after organizing that, the next activity that we will have will already be an educational activity where lahat ng mga technical people, we, we may invite again uh, DA if you are, uh, from Region 8 to again lecture us uh, more extensively. You know? And then maybe we can get some an expert from uh, uh, Dole Philippines to talk about Has Avocado, their experience in growing it in Mindanao. And uh, hopefully they could, they could share with us their experiences. Yun ang next natin. So I would like to defer on answering that uh, question, uh, uh, Bebe, no? Uh, sapagkat uh, Bebe, no? sapagkat uh, hindi ako expert dyan. How can we avail uh, of the planting materials? Pakibalik okay, ngayon. How do we avail of the planting materials for Has Avocado uh, Langka? As I've said, this is not going to be an indiscriminate uh, distribution of uh, planting materials. We will have to plan everything. We will have to determine whether your area, if you want to go uh, commercial on this, no? na talagang hanap buhay, uh, we have to, to first determine whether your area is suited to the planting of langka and avocado. Sapagkat kapag hindi namunga yan, sisihin mo yung taga-FBR uh, sa abuyog. Walang yan, sinungaling yung mga taga-DA, FBR. Sabi, masarap yung langka, bakit ilaw, bakit, 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 bakit hindi matamis. No? Sapagkat hindi tama yung area yung tinanin mo. So, I'm sorry, I, I don't want I don't want to uh, rain on your parade, no? Because I know everybody's excited to plant langka, to plant avocado. Lalo sinabi ni ma'am kanina, mga 1 million nakikita ito sa kiktarya isang taon, walang kaya. Wow, magpapanik na ito. This, <laughs> this is going to be panic time, no? Now, everybody would like to plant langka. But let me remind you, there are uh, considerations in planting anything. Elevation, type of soil, rainfall pattern, uh, climatic uh, considerations, geographic considerations. Kaya nga mag aerial mapping tayo. Di ba? Mag-GO tagging mo tayo, GO mapping. Bago tayo magsabi na, o oh, sige, yung area mo pwede yan. Sapagkat later on, baka magalit kayo sa amin. Pag hindi namunga ng marami yung uh, langka mo o avocado mo, sisihin mo kami eh kung saan sa mo tinanin. So I hope everybody will understand this, no? Not everybody can plant has avocado. Not everybody can plant langka. Uh, where to buy grafted avocado and langka seedlings in a cheaper price? Well, actually, totoo yan, uh, ma'am, no? Ma'am uh, Wena. Meron nagbebenta ngayon uh, because, uh, alam niyo naman, uso-uso, uh, yung ang badyang, binenta ng 50,000 ba yun? No? Na wala naman kakwenta-kwenta. Kasi pag nauso sa social media, ay eh, nagmamahalan. Uh, Dati-dati, ang bili ko doon sa similia ko ng uh, FBR Suite, 150 lang ata yun, ma'am, no? 150, 100. Parang ganun lang eh. Ngayon, ang bentahan ng uh, FBR Suite lang ka sa Luzon is 1,000. Sapagkat palagang sinusulat ni Secretary Pinyol sa Facebook page niya. <laughs> Magalik pala ako marketing agent. Ha? No? Pati has avocado ngayon, ang dami nagbabenta, ubod ng mahal. Now, you have to understand na mahal yan kasi hindi available. Eh. That's why kailangan talaga natin ng uh, uh, legitimate uh, nurse, colonial uh, nursery para yung ating quality will be uniform. So, wag tayo magmadali. No? Uh, we will program everything. We will do it. We will do this right. We will not go uh, the way of uh, the rubber industry or the banana industry or the oil palm industry na marka bahala basta may nakitang parang oil palm tinanim na hindi alam na bunga lang pala yon no? so we will do this right um do we have available seedlings for dwarf avocado i i don't know of any dwarf avocado uh or langka no? i i don't know what is the has equivalent in the philippines uh another 
uh, DNR uh, Kati Escozar. No? I'm, I'm sorry, but uh, Haas is a, uh, a variety of avocado uh, developed in uh, Mexico. Actually, ang source ng avocado talaga, binasa ko kasi, ang source ng avocado talaga, uh, South America. And uh, kanina nga, sinabi ko sa inyo, uh, I, I, mean, I believe that yung Philippine avocado actually came from uh, Mexico. You remember during the Spanish period, meron tayong galion trade. Kaya meron ding manga Manila, yung mango Manila ang Mexico. Eh. Galing din sa atin yun. Uh, so, uh, ang avocado is not endemic to the Philippines actually. Uh, it's a uh, it's a fruit that uh, may have come from Mexico. Uh, so, wala tayong has. Yung atin dito, yung mga malagkit, yung uh, apple na avocado. Ang problema natin dyan, maiksi ang shelf life kasi manipit, ang, manipit sa balat, unlike as avocado. Okay? Uh, there is uh, avocado in the Philippines uh, known as lagkitan. How is this called internationally? Uh, siguro glutinous, dahil yun ang English ng malagkit. But I have this in my farm. By the way, I'm also propagating this mama uh, for my use lang. Uh, I have three uh, trees uh, planted by the former owner of the land which I bought in 1993. These are all trees. Uh, malagkit yung bunga, hindi ko lang pinansin. Ngayon na-realize ko na malaki pala yung market ng avocado. So I'm now developing the malagkit variety aside from the as variety of avocado. Other questions? There is one guide for avocado farming. Yes, we will do that. We will go into that. No? Uh, San Pacific has avocado and Balintza Sayaw small-scale propagators with Acuna agricultural products uh, trading. Yes, uh, ito yung nagbebenta nung ano ng mga similya. May request lang ako, wag niyo masyadong mahalan. <laughs> uh, we will be developing farm in the highland of our town, um, Erwin at Chavez. Uh, please uh, let me know the process guidelines. Very good. That's what I would like to hear. No? Magtatanong muna ano ba proseso, ano ba requirements. That's, that's how we start properly. Uh, do we already have an accredited nursery for us. Yes, meron yung Acuna Nursery actually they imported from California uh, and accredited oh, sila. Yeah. No? Yung yes. mga, meron din yung Vanilla also imported. Uh, mine, uh, I, I actually grow has avocado now uh, but I got my science from uh, the four trees planted by Dole Philippines in uh, Talakad, Bukidnon. Uh, which are now about uh, four years old. So, doon ko kinukuha yung aking mga science, but I'm propagating hot avocado also. But mine is not registered, so it's for personal use only. Uh, where can we buy hot avocado seedling in Mindanao, particularly in Bukidnon? As I've said, please wait. Bukidnon is an ideal place for hot avocado farming, but please wait, we will make arrangements so that uh, we will do this. We will do this right. North Cotabato growers, willing us growers, Marami pa tayong available na seedlings uh, in Alamada. Ito kay uh, uh, John Paul Bulaklak ito. Ang tuli ito, uh, his father, a friend of mine, si, uh, si Frank uh, Cruz. Uh, John Paul Bulaklak Cruz. No? Uh, si Frank Cruz, yung tatay niya, kaibigan ko, uh, brought in a uh, hasa avocado seedling from California. And yun ang naging mother tree niya. So although hindi registered yan, it's an authentic... Uh, Authentic uh, has avocado mother tree actually. Right? So, other questions? I just want to ask if it's possible to plant has at 2,900 meters above sea level. Uh, well, for as long as trees grow there, I don't think uh, it, it really matters. Kapatagan, yes, you should plant trees there. No? Uh, in fact, uh, dapat nga. Uh, i-regulate natin yung pagtatanim ng gulay dyan sa paanan ng Mount Apo and uh, start planting uh, coffee, cacao, has, avocado, and maybe even uh, what? Uh, other trees na pwedeng uh, mag-survive sa high elevation. Questions? Yan lang. 
How true po na makadeplete ng water ang avocado plantation? How true po na makadeplete ng water ang avocado plantation? How true? Opo. How true. Ah, okay. So, an an alam nyo, merong may mga views na kanyan na matakaw daw sa tubig ang avocado and so on and so forth. Ano bang kanil mga hindi matakaw sa tubig? Lahat ang kanil matakaw sa tubig. Pwera cactus. In fact, uh, yung mga kanyang views actually na parang nananakot na higupin na ng avocado yung tubig, eh, dapat i-share ko na yung ibang bansa dyan dahil sa nagtatanggol ng avocado. Uh, besides, yung situation sa Chile, uh, yung situation sa Peru, yung situation sa Mexico, and even Southern California, where they don't have mass rains actually. You remember that song? It never rains in Southern California. So they, they irrigate. No? That's why kailangan nilang tubig. Sa atin, napakataas ang ating rainfall uh, pattern. In fact, ang ating uh, rainfall uh, sa Pilipinas is as high as 700 centimeters. Uh, that's double the rainfall of uh, California and Israel. Kaya sa atin, walang hindi, hindi issue yun. Eh. In fact, uh, Saan ka ba nakakita rito ng uh, fruit tree farm na merong uh, drip irrigation? Bihira. Kasi regular yung rainfall pattern natin. Although ideal talaga na may, may irrigation system ka para schedule yung delivery mo ng tubig sa tanim mo. Most of the fruit farmers actually don't have irrigation system because heavy yung rainfall natin. So it's not a concern for the Philippines actually. Uh, soil moisture content, uh, that's too technical. I, I, I cannot answer that. I'm not a technical guy. Question for DBB president on programs, particularly APP. Where can we start the process for the application, sir? I hope uh, my friend, uh, President uh, Manny Arbosa, is still around to answer this. Or Pero Taka DBP would uh, answer this. Okay, questions. Can we intercrop avocado with other vegetables like squash or tomatoes? Yes. Yes. I, I do it in my farm, not avocado. Uh, in fact, in between my uh, uh, langka trees, no? I planted uh, no, in buko kandan. Kasi ma ma malawak naman yung distance. Eh. Uh, although ang recommended is 8 by 8 Ang, ang uh, talagang ideal daw is 9 by 9.5 by 9.5. So ma malawak yung na. Pwede ka pa magtanim ng gulay. In fact, ang plano natin doon sa highlands ng Bukid noon is to encourage vegetable farmers to plant avocado doon sa mga area na medyo undulating na, na hindi pwede taniman ng gulay. And then doon sa flat area, maggulay sila. Doon sa mga kilit-kilit, sa mga creeps, doon sila magkakaroon. Asa. Okay. So, uh, I'm sorry but we have to move on no. Uh sapagkat meron pa tayong dalawang speakers, si Secretary uh, Allen Kapuyan uh, ng NCIP or his representative and later uh, Land Bank of the Philippines uh, si uh, Ma'am uh, Charlotte uh, Conde who will also tell us uh, what financing support would Land Bank give to uh, these new industries that we're trying to build uh, for Mindanao. Now, let me repeat. I'm sorry for uh, uh, people in uh, Luzon and the Visayas who are complaining that I'm focusing on Mindanao. Uh, I'm the chairman of the Mindanao Development Authority. I'm no longer your agriculture secretary. So I focus on Mindanao, but we're willing to help you. Uh, in fact, kung may mga organized na grupo dyan, uh, willing naman kami tumulong. The first place, Pilipino pa rin tayo. At sino-sino pa magtutulong natin tayo. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much po for your responses, uh, Secretary Pinyol, to the questions posed by our participants here today. We still have around 365 po uh, on our Zoom account. So, medyo marami po. And that's not including... Umabot yung kanina ng uh, 400, 400 plus. 
Siguro na nanghalian yung iba. Uh, yes sir, kasi alauna na and tuloy-tuloy po yung program natin. So we're hoping na papalik sila after their, they have their lunch. Okay? So um, by the way, by the way, hindi nanalo si uh, Rabia Mateo. Uh, sino nanalo? Mexico? Mexico po sir, yung source ng avocado. Sa avocado at saka sa magandang babae, Mexico pa rin ang number one. <laughs> Di ba le? Ten years from now. Philippines, ang target natin is 100,000 hectares for Hasa Bukato. We will be uh, a top contender. Okay. Sige. Thank you very much, po, sir. Now, I would just like to address no, a, uh, a, a point raised earlier about the need for irrigation, um, which is true because as Secretary Pinola has already has often emphasized, there is no agriculture, there is no water or irrigation. That's why in Minda, we have this program to... Uh, provide irrigation through the use of renewable energy in coordination with local government units. Okay? This is part of our small efforts to contribute to the development of the agricultural sector in Mindanao. Po, okay? Another point raised earlier was that okay, um, hindi lang po tayo pwede magtanim at magtanim and expect to be able to export this. We need to do our homework talaga. Okay, to check out the phytosanitary requirements of the target countries wherein we plan to export our food products. Okay? That's why we're going to organize a council for avocado and langka to look into this and provide consultation and advice to our future growers and farmers of langka and avocado para mapasok po nila yung mga export markets. Okay? Just because nagtanim po tayo doesn't mean na automatically makapasok po yan. Okay? Especially when you talk about Japan, medyo strict po sila sa phytosanitary requirements nila. And, you know, we would have to comply. And complying with the requirements starts from the very beginning when you, before ka pa mag-plant ng ano, avocado or lang kami. Okay? So, we've noticed that we have participants from our Lumads and Indigenous Peoples communities here. And in that regard, our next speaker will be talking about the potentials of the ancestral domains in Mindanao for has avocado and langka production. In, on this point, we have Ms. Glenda Pua, the Chief Social Economic Development Division of the National Commission for Indigenous Peoples Central Office to represent Secretary Alan Kapuyan of the NCI. Inyong narinig ang programang Ang Totoong Magsasaka. Isang oras na talakayan tungo sa programang pangsakahan at usaping pampamayanan. Kasama si Manny Pinyol, Ang Totoong Magsasaka. Magsasaka.